Hey guys, welcome back to another wood brew video. My name is Dylan and my wife Molly and I have been building a teardrop camper from scratch over the last several months. And it's actually a little bit of a bittersweet moment today because it's being handed off to its new owners. And that means that it's finally time to go over a cost breakdown and reveal the final weight of this camper. All of that right after a short message from today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? For me, I struggle with anxiety and I always have, but as of recently with all of the additional responsibilities of getting older, thinking about the future and the future of my family, that anxiety has gotten to a point where I think it's a bit of an issue. I started meeting with a therapist a couple of months ago using BetterHelp's app and I must say within just a couple of sessions, I started seeing real world improvements. If you are trying out therapy for the first time, it can be quite intimidating, but BetterHelp offers the ability to have chat messaging, phone calls, or video chat with your therapist, which really helps you ease into it. And admittedly, I wasn't comfortable with the video chat at first, so I chose a phone call. BetterHelp's platform makes it extremely easy to connect with a licensed therapist. And they do that by giving you a simple questionnaire and then matching you with someone that they believe is the best fit. However, if for whatever reason you don't feel comfortable with that therapist or would like to change, you can do so free of charge, which I think is really awesome. Don't be like me and for many years, allow people's opinions to deprive you of great quality sleep, quality mental health, and an overall better outlook on life because I struggled with all of those things and therapy has gone a really long way in helping me manage and improve those. Sign up today at betterhelp.com forward slash woodbrew and receive 10% off your first month of therapy. And I promise you guys, you will not regret trying this out. All right, guys, it's time to break down the full cost of the teardrop camper build. But before we do, I want to let you guys know that at the end of this video, we're going to be revealing the final weight of this camper. And I think many of y'all are going to be shocked based on some of the comments I've seen. So if you will, leave a comment down below and take a guess on what you think the final weight of this camper is. And it'll be sort of a fun game for you at the end to see how close you were. So the Harbor Freight trailer comes in at about $400 to $450. And then we added a lot of upgrades to it that significantly increased the price. The first thing we did was add in a brand new 3,500 pound axle, as well as new rims and tires. We also added new leaf springs, which are rated for much more weight. And then we went around and we welded the entire frame, as well as added a piece of two by two square tubing down the center of the trailer to significantly increase its strength. Along with all of that, we went ahead and added a tongue jack as well as a tongue box on the front. Now, all of that came to a whopping $1,550 there, give or take. We also added bed liner as an additional cost in there. Now, the main construction of the camper is made up of four different layers. It is a half inch outer layer of BCX exterior rated plywood. This is a sanded, decent quality plywood. It's not quite as good as a cabinet grade uh, plywood, but it is much better than your typical construction plywood. The interior layer is another layer of ACX, which is slightly better, slightly higher grade, exterior grade plywood. And that is a three quarter inch material. That stuff was real expensive. In fact, all of the plywood because of the COVID price uh, hike, all of it during the time that we were building this was really expensive, almost double what I used to pay for it. And then the interior insulation was a three quarter inch uh, poly ISO material. And then the final interior finished layer was a quarter inch birch plywood. Now all of the plywood added up to around $1,200. And then we had a miscellaneous amount of about $150 of extra solid wood and other wood type products that we needed to finish the camper. In addition to the plywood, we had that insulation in there and that only cost about $50. So that was a huge bang for our buck to go ahead and add in insulation in the floor and the walls and in the ceiling because the majority of campers out there only have a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood for the side walls and zero insulation. The fact that we were able to make this really thick construction, super durable. I mean, you rarely ever see a half inch exterior plywood on a teardrop. It's usually, like I said, just one single piece of three quarters. So the fact that we have an inch and a half thick wall, it means that we have a super strong wall 
and it was worth upgrading and worth the extra work in my opinion. Now the doors were a bit of a shocker for me because when we looked at buying doors, they were about $1,200 and all the reviews I saw were pretty bad. They were small, they were leaky, they didn't have many choices and you were sort of left it, I don't know, on a whim of whether or not you were gonna get a quality door. Many of the doors that arrived to people had issues so I was pretty leery about using those doors, not to mention the fact that like 99% of teardrop manufacturers use those doors. I wanted to do something different. So we decided to make our own doors and I thought we'd save a lot of money, but we really didn't save nearly as much as I thought. The doors ended up costing us $450, give or take to make. You know, some of that's plywood insulation. And then the windows were a huge cost of it to add in there, as well as the door locks. The door locks alone were $80, which was really surprising. Now, obviously that means that we still saved about, what, like $800 or so, which is still a lot of money in a budget that is as tight as this one that we had. We were shooting for a $5,000 uh, budget on this. So any sort of money that we could save was useful. And these doors were actually much larger than the ones you could buy. So I still think that it was a really good purchase. However, they took a really long time to make. They were hard to figure out and there was a whole lot of R&D behind the scenes trying to figure out how exactly to make them because there's very few resources out there showcasing any of that. Some of the benefits of our doors, I think, are again, some of the oversized nature of them. They're a lot bigger. They're also insulated, which is really nice, and they're just thicker in general, and they're made of wood, so they're gonna transfer the heat a little bit less than just basically a solid metal door. Now, electrical was another thing that was a bit of a shocker for me after looking at the numbers. I thought it was gonna be relatively inexpensive, but we ended up spending about $430 on all of the electrical. That did, however, include all of the trailer lights, which we installed these really nice aluminum trailer lights that I thought were a huge upgrade. You know, one of the biggest things that I've had issues with with trailers is the trailer lights themselves. And I wanted to make sure that we had a bomber system because I didn't want uh, anyone to have to be constantly figuring out what was wrong with the trailer lights. That's super frustrating when you're on a trip. So I went ahead and made a pretty bomb-proof trailer light system. And then I also added a bunch of lights, more than that was necessary, but I thought it would be nice to have as many lights as you could, you know, in the first place. So we had lights on the cabin interior that were bedside lights that were articulating. They also had a USB charger in them for your phone. And then I had an overhead light in the cabin that allowed you to have plenty of light when you're loading and unloading the camper, as well as the overhead vent fan, which is super, super important to be comfortable in there. That was pretty expensive and I'm including that in the electrical bill. And then in the back we had two more overhead lights and a lot of uh, 120 volt power outlets and different things. So there was a lot going on in the electrical system. So it was quite expensive and more than I thought it was gonna be, but I think it was well worth it. Now we had a bunch of miscellaneous hardware, about $170 worth throughout the build of just random nuts and screws and bolts and different little things that were being added onto the camper, such as little clamps and uh, hinges and all sorts of different things that were happening on the camper. So that was an expense that added up more than again than I thought it would just because when you initially think about it, you don't think about all the random little bits and pieces that you'll need. So yeah, all the random stuff was about $170. Now lastly, this is gonna be a big shocker and some of y'all will have expected this, but I certainly didn't expect this when we went into this sort of project. So, you know, ultimately we chose to use Bedliner as the finish of the teardrop. But the more and more I read into it, I figured out that you have to do really good prep work. And if you don't properly prep before Bedliner, you're gonna have issues. If you check out forums online and stuff that you'll see people having issues with Bedliner, but then you'll also notice that there are a lot of commercially available campers with Bedliner that seemingly have no issues. And due to my research, one of the things that was the biggest factor in this was, first of all, what material did the person use under the bed liner? And second, how was it sealed? So I wanted to make sure we got that right. So starting off with that exterior grade plywood, this has waterproof glue, it has a really thick uh, layer on the outside. So a lot of these birch plywoods have very thin layers that if there's any void whatsoever at all, that's a place for moisture to collect and for that tiny veneer to easily peel up. 
See, with a bigger, larger exterior grade plywood, you don't have to worry about that as much because there isn't a tiny surface layer of veneer that, can, that basically you're relying on for your full adhesion of the entire product. So that was the first thing that we decided to do. And the second thing we decided to do was epoxy every single seam and add fiberglass tape. Because the next thing that really matters with bed liner is movement. Now, big misconception is, is that wood moves too much for bed liner. That's completely inaccurate. If you look at metal on say a truck bed or anything like that, metal moves far more than wood does as it's exposed to heat. So it's not really as big of an issue as people think. However, the thing that wood does that metal doesn't is that at the seams of wood, they can warp and that movement is quite a lot. So you can run into issues there. So we wanted to make sure that all of our seams were really well sealed as well as fiberglass tape to hopefully help prevent any sort of warping into the future. And then finally, the last thing we did before applying bed liner was we applied an epoxy based primer, something that on its own was going to be good enough. And that was just gonna provide a really good solid underlayment per se for this bed liner that we ended up using. Now all of that, including all of the clear finishes, all of this stuff was more or less a total, total boat products with the exception of the bed liner. We used total boats, high performance epoxy, their penetrating epoxy, as well as Halzion and uh, Lust. And those are their two clear finishes. We used all of their products throughout the camper. That came out to be around $1,200, which is a lot, but honestly, it's a lot for the most important part of the camper. See, one of the biggest issues I've found with teardrops doing my research is that people don't camp very often, right? So teardrops just sit outside not being used and they're also not being checked up on like a house. If something leaks in your house, you notice it pretty quickly because you're in there all the time. Something like a teardrop, if it has a small leak, it's gonna lead to big issues because it's not gonna be found for potentially months or even sometimes years. And then by then it's far too late. So I wanted to make sure this thing was bomb proof with the waterproofness. So it was an expense that I think was well worth it. And honestly, I think it's still comparable to basically any other option out there like an aluminum skin or anything like that, except for I think that it's far more waterproof and more durable being is that there is no real penetrations in it. If you look at an aluminum skin trailer, the reason I don't like that is because you have to use a ton of trim and thousands of screws. And all those screws are just opportunities for water to infiltrate it. I'm not saying that that system doesn't work. It's just the system that I didn't really want to go with on this camper. Now our goal was to stay under $5,000 and we didn't quite make it. It was about $5,200. Now that is what the total cost of this camper would cost you if you were to build it the same way we did. However, I will say that we spent more than that in some R&D up front because there was a lot of materials and hardware that we tried out that didn't quite work out and either wasn't returnable or was used to a point that we couldn't return it. So we did spend more than this throughout this build process, but this is what our final, like everything that we used on this camper would cost. So I'd be interested to know what you guys think about how much this camper ended up costing. Do you think that that is a lot of money for what this is? Do you think that it's a lot of money for a teardrop in general? I see a lot of videos floating around online of teardrop campers being built for just a couple thousand dollars or even less. I find it hard to believe, but a lot of those people aren't really using off the shelf products. They're using like a, a used trailer and not having to add any additions onto that and used materials and different things like that. I think that we built a pretty bomb proof camper, at least, you know, that's my hope. I wanted to build something that was really high quality. So I'm curious to know what you guys think about how much this camper costs and if it's something that you might think about building. All right guys, it's finally time to reveal the final way to this camper, which is something that I was super excited to find out was a little bit nervous about because I did a lot of calculating up front to figure out what I thought it might end up being. And I was pretty close, I'm not gonna lie. SketchUp and using price per square foot of material estimates and things, I was able to get relatively close. So this is your last chance though to comment down below. You can pause the video right now and comment and let us know what you think it actually weighed. So 
To be clear, we took this to a real actual truck scale and got a very accurate weight with both the truck and the trailer. And then we got just one of the trailer just to see what the difference would be. Okay, so without further ado, the final weight of the camper is 1,020 pounds, which is absolutely insane. Now, what this includes is the mattress, the power station, the tongue box, and any of the other accessories that we added on. If you remove those types of accessories, you can easily subtract 100 plus pounds from that weight, putting the dry weight of this camper under 1,000 pounds, which is absolutely crazy considering the construction methods that we used. Now it's really crazy considering the majority of commercially available campers out there weigh hundreds of pounds more and they use a simple three quarter inch thick sidewall. I was really surprised by this. I'm not quite sure where we saved the majority of our weight, but I know a lot of it has to come down to what we did with the actual wall construction, how we put all that together, and then the simplicity of our build. We didn't add a lot of fancy extra features. We didn't add a ton of extra cabinets. Anywhere that we did add things, I used the absolute minimal amount that we could use to keep it as strong as it needed to be and not overbuild it. I wanted to make something that was plenty strong enough for its application, but not so overbuilt that it weighed an excessive amount. Also, one of the things that a lot of people were concerned about was whether or not this camper was gonna be way too tail heavy. Now, when a trailer has too much weight over the back of the axle, you get horrible trailer sway and it's really dangerous to drive. Now, this was one of the things that I was keeping in mind throughout the entire build. It's actually something that I pre-calculated up front, you know, just based on estimates and was hoping that I would get right. And I'm happy to say that the trailer tongue weight is only 107 pounds, which is well within the percentages needed for this thousand pound trailer. It's actually almost perfect. Now, basically, if you add anything into the tongue box, you're gonna get a tongue heavy trailer, which is really what you want. But what's really good about that 107 pound tongue weight means that you can pretty much tow this thing with just about anything. Because although many of these teardrop campers are very lightweight, their tongue weight can oftentimes be far too much for small vehicles. If you look at something like a smaller car that maybe only has a 1500 to 2000 pound tow capacity, which would pull a normal teardrop, oftentimes they have a max tongue weight of only 100 pounds, which is really quite limiting. So with this trailer having that lower tongue weight, I think that it's gonna be really nice and comfortable to pull down the road with basically any car you have. So after spending literally hundreds of hours on this camper from the design to the finish, I must say that I'm very pleasantly surprised and happy with the results of this camper. There was a lot of trials and tribulations throughout the build. Lots of things changed. I learned a tremendous amount throughout this project and it was a very good design challenge for me and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Now, if you guys are interested in building one of these yourself, we do have a SketchUp file, which includes all of the design aspects and measurements and things of this camper. And there'll be a link in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. This could help you design your own camper and or give you all the cut lists and types of things that you might need to build this one yourself. Now, would we do it again? Absolutely. And it's the reason why I don't have a full, full scale set of plans available yet. Molly and I want to build something that is more future and foolproof once we see how this camper actually performs on the road. I didn't want to just put something out after only having camped in it for a couple of times because this is a large investment for people. This isn't just a simple piece of furniture that they're building. This is something that needs to be safe and needs to be good for years to come. When we hand this off to the future owners, I'm gonna be keeping in touch with them and I hope to do some follow-up videos to find out where the weak points are in this camper and ultimately design something around how the camper performs in the real world to make an even better version of this that will have a full set of plans and will be super simple to build. I wanna give a big shout out to all of you guys that have supported this series. It has meant a lot. It's been, gosh, like 20 episodes of videos in this series, and it's taken like five months to build. It's been one of our really most ambitious projects and one that took a lot longer than expected admittedly, 
but I really appreciate all you guys comments and support throughout this series because doing these larger projects like this that take months at a time is really difficult to be able to actually do and sustain. So having you guys support it in all the ways that you do, it really helps us a lot be able to do more of these type projects in the future. And I also wanted to give a brief shout out to all of the sponsors that helped us throughout this series, including BetterHelp on this video, but also iFixit, who helped us out a lot on this series and really helped push this project forward. So thank you guys, all of y'all, every single one of you for helping us make this project possible. And I really hope you enjoyed this series. If you are just watching this and you'd like to be able to see the full series that I'm talking about, there'll be a playlist that you can check out in the link in the description below that'll take you through all 20 episodes. You might, uh, you might need to get yourself a cold beverage and you know, a good comfortable spot because it's a lot of footage. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'd be super interested to see what your comments are about this camper, the final weight, the cost, all of that. So don't forget to comment down below. I really wanna check out y'all's feedback. And with all that said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.